right, well, this Bantamweight division ubiquitously regarded as the deepest in the top 15 right now in the UFC, and this man's the number one contender. He has beaten so many talented fighters to get this title fight. Now we see what the hell he can do. Can't beat them all, except the champion. Right. It's such a weird thing that you can go through so many tough guys, but ultimately the toughest one is the one you get last. So you go through this murderer's row of people to earn an opportunity, and now you get to fight the best. The champion is good, man, but this guy believes he has the skill set to take that title from him. Yeah, he's been forged by the experience. He derives so much confidence from the training room, and it all comes down to these 25 minutes or fewer for the number one bantamweight contender. your father's bantamweight division right dc a lot of people would argue in this era 135 pounds one through 50 is the ufc's deepest division and this is the champion who has emerged from that talented battle yeah it's a very tough weight class i mean you look at the top 15 all these guys are so talented but when you look at the champ you can see that there's something different about him it's in his swagger it's in his abilities it's in his idea that he is just so much better than everyone else. It's easy to poke holes in that unless he keeps winning. That's exactly what he's done. He's mastered the game, he's mastered the weight cut, he's got every skill in the book. Most believe it's gonna take a Herculean effort to dethrone that champion here tonight. Well, so much UFC history has played out for a team over the ring in Las Vegas, Nevada. Plenty more where that came from. Herb Dean, third man in the octagon tonight. Well, for all the places we go in the world, you can hold up to this one. Good evening from Team Over Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Opened April of 2016. UFC went there for the first time at UFC 200, and they've been bringing big shows seemingly every other month ever since. They call Vegas the fight capital of the world. And if you're talking about a home base for the UFC, you're talking about Team Over Arena, home to some of the biggest UFC events ever, UFC 200. Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. This place has been the home of some of the biggest UFC fights in history. Tonight, you get to take the same walk to that octagon to try to make your mark on the sport. Oh, really exploiting his reach advantage as he landed the jab there, DC. Nice counter punch there as he continues to make good use of this advantage in reach. I mean, these guys are letting it fly. What a pace that they're fighting at. Up into that kick. Big left hook coming. It's blocked. Back and forth we go. Punches in bunches as he lands another combination there. Really doing a nice job stringing his shots together. He's doing a great job of stringing the shots together and also just mixing up the target and the attacks. Great job finding different places for his strikes to land. Nice punch lands over the top. Just out of range with the big right hand. Oh, huge knee! Nice block. Two minutes have gone by. Oh, nice hook by you, Don. Tries to work it into a takedown. Nasty high kick. How is he still standing? Now he counters with a right hook to the head. When he gets close, he throws, he lands. Yeah, it looks a little wobbly on his feet. Well, his opponent seemed to be stunned to a significant extent, but was able to recover, and it's almost like he let him off the hook. Kind of let him off the hook. He needed to really put his foot on the gas to try to find that fit. And just misses with that big right hand. That's a good kick by him right there. 
Two minutes to go in round one. Oh. Nice side to Monte. It's worth. Oh, nice up cut there. Back and forth we go. Oh, man. Just one combination after the next. Just absolutely picking him apart with this strike. I'm time. almost shielding my eyes at this point, John. I can't watch this guy get beat up as he has been getting beat up. He has to make a change. He has to do something different. His opponent is too free. He feels too good in there. Go and try to interrupt this. Yes, the single collar tie now. Oh, nice change up on the tempo there as the hook in the clinch lands by you don't. Immediately gets the underhook. Oh, these are some impactful knees he is throwing, and I guess until his opponent adjusts, might as well keep throwing them. He's gonna keep going to the well. Why would he change it? His opponent has not been able to figure out these knees. My chance starting to see some swelling upstairs now. He's taking way too many shots to the head. You gotta move your head. You cannot be on the straight line. Otherwise, you will take shots, and that shot, and those shots, leads to your face starting to swell. 30 seconds to go here. It's a pretty fast jab. Well, block that punch. Oh, he lands another strike to the body, really starting to connect on a lot of shots to the midsection, and these will take their toll as this fight goes into the latter rounds. Let's take a look back at some of the replays, DC, and if you like the kicking game, that was the round for you. Yeah, I man, he used his kicks beautifully. He managed distance, managed space, and eventually those kicks started to really take an effect on his opponent and slow him down. He has to stay the course next round. You ready to fight? You ready? Go Second round on the run. All right, here we go. This next round is underway. He got worked in that previous frame. We'll see if he has recovered here as he enters this next round. He don't recover in a minute, so he needs to extend the recovery time. Fight at a slower pace. You cannot go in there slinging leather again, or he'll find the light shut out this time. Looked like he clipped him with a left-hand counter there. Great job blocking that one. Big shot lands for both guys. And just inches away from landing one of those big right hands. Oh, strong hook to the head there by Yudong. Just misses with a left hook there. Nice connection with the punch in the clinch. He is going after that overhand right. Well, that left hand has been there at times, not on that attempt. Big shot to the head. Just unable to quite find that range. All right, so now blood is a factor. You see that he has been opened up in that eye area. Yeah, he's got hit in the eye, and now there's a cut. But he's not going to worry about too much now. He's got to be very careful with it as we go forward. Whiffs on the straight right hand. Big double leg, double team. Under three minutes now to go in round two. Oh, 
Oh, he passes the half guard now. And he's not posturing the land punches, so look for a submission attempt. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by Yudong. Another one. I mean, he cannot miss from the top position. Making all these shots count. Oh, and he escapes up to his feet. Very nice. Well, he has really picked up the pace here in round two. Much more aggressive than we saw in round one. And now starting to find himself in the pocket. Well, not much of a setup there. Misses with the left hook. Man, these guys have some chins on them. Huge shots being landed on both sides. Oh, is he opened up now? Nasty cut on the bridge of the nose. Good series of kicks by him there, DC. He has certainly found his range on the feet. I mean, when you don't check, you're gonna continue to get blasted with kicks. His opponent has not deterred him from keeping on throwing those kicks. Slip that offering from his opponent. In the past, we've seen him sort of lean on the toughness. Tonight, he's leaning on the defense. And you see the evolution of the fighter in front of us. He doesn't have to be tough anymore. The more he can slip strike, the longer he can prolong his career. Good job blocking that shot. When both are prepared, these are the types of fights that we expect. Well, I think I can smell the blood at this point in time. That canvas didn't look like that a few fights ago. Blood is flowing from that cut with every passage. Every strike. And it burns. John, it burns so bad. When you get cut like that, every time a shot lands, it just burns. So this guy needs to try to find a way to not take and limit the damage he's taking to this cut. Easier said than done. Busy in the clinch, lands that punch. Well, until his opponent adjusts, you might as well keep going with it as he continues to land a high volume of strikes in this one, DC. Well, you don't want to be stuck on your feet with a boxer of this caliber. This guy's too good. And Seconds winding down in round two. Nice shot inside by the champion. All right, that's the end of round number two. All right, so there's the end of the round. You see the blood trickling down as he makes his way back to the stool. Cut on the bridge of the nose, or so it appears from the strike in that round. Cut man getting right to work. All right, I'm being told we've got some replays from the previous round, and it appears as though the cut on the bridge of the nose is getting worse by the minute. It's getting worse by the minute, and he's got an opponent in front of him that wants to target it. He wants to hit him on the nose over and over again. I wonder if every time he gets hit there, the blood goes down into the mouth, making it difficult to breathe. You ready to fight? Ready. Good. Round three of a possible five. All right, so as this next round gets underway, hopefully the good action we saw in the last round will continue. Both fighters certainly had their ups and downs. Both got the offense going. But now we'll see if one fighter or the other can really take control of what has been a very close fight thus far. Unable to land on the uppercut there, but now starting to use that reach advantage. Well, just as he did in the previous round, he continues to connect on a high volume of strikes. And a good sign, too, doesn't seem to be slowing down whatsoever. Back to the left hand now, unable to connect. Always busy here in the clinch, lands a nice punch there. They're so evenly matched, they're going to detach. Here's the kick blocked by Yudong. Circling to his right. Champ, look at that redness underneath his elbow. A lot of those strikes to the body starting to pile up. Getting beat up and being smart enough to not be headhunting the entire time. I like this. I like this approach. Rips the body there. 
Well, you got to think he's going to enjoy watching this one back tomorrow morning. He has landed a ton of significant strikes and really a guy who has been a monster in the gym finally putting it together. Huge elbow hit. Straight right, he misses. Just misses with the jab there. Just over three minutes to go. Throws a big right hand, but doesn't find its home. Well, you thought the cup man did his job, but that cut on the nose is just nasty, and it is pouring blood now. Oh, they're trying to boot shots here to see who's the last man standing. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Oh, he's landed a high number of total strikes here in the latter stages of this fight. He's really picked up the pace and landing far more strikes than he did in previous rounds. Trying to kick the leg out. Quick jab. Well, as soon as he goes with that high guard, he pays for it to the body. You see the bruise. That one appeared to stun him. Not there. About two minutes here to go in round three. Denying the durability on the other side, but at this point, you just gotta find that kill shot and get him out of there. A lot of times that comes with reps, that comes with taking your time. You get excited and you want to finish it because you think it's right there, but at times you just overswing and you miss a lot. He needs to slow down if he wants to get his opponent out of this fight. Oh, that right hand barely missed there. Oh, trying to turn out the lights with that roundhouse kick, but just misses. And he lands a knee. Well, earlier in the round, he clearly got stunned by his opponent, but he just has not responded well at all. He hasn't responded well. He hasn't gotten himself back home. He's getting hurt so bad for me now. Well, this is absolutely the hurt business. It's hard to see which party is more injured, but I think both fighters have been really affected with their strikes in this one. Yeah, both guys have been affected. Both guys have been beat up. It's a very competitive fight. Let's see who has the heart to carry them through these very tough moments. Well, now these kicks are really starting to pile up since he found his range. This could be trouble. Slips the shot. when this cut happened, and now it is getting really bad. They're going to have a lot of cleanup to do before our next battle. Yes, they're going to have a lot of cleanup. I mean, I you know, part of the, the thing, right? You go into a bloody octagon, you fight, you wrestle. It is what it is at that point. That's the beauty in being at the end of the night. All right, All right three rounds down, potentially two more to go. We are headed to the championship rounds. All right, back to the stools now, and he is no longer the handsome man we once knew. That gash is getting serious. All right, let us re-rack some replays of the damage done in that round, see if we can isolate the strike that caused the cut. Yeah, a nasty cut opens up when he lands there. It's a beautiful shot that gets to the target. He has not been responsible defensively, and he's really paying for it because now he's dealing with that nasty cut. You ready to fight? Ready. All right, here's round four. Fight scheduled for five five-minute rounds. All right, so here we go with our fourth round of a possible five. And a lot of fighters change up their training camp when they're fighting five rounds versus three. Yeah, you got to change it up. You have to mix things up because fighting for an extra 10 minutes is not normal. Guys don't do this normally. It's a 15-minute fight. So you have to do things physically and also mentally to make sure that you're ready to go to that extra distance. Well, just as he did the previous round, continuing to land a high number of strikes here, 
and he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down. Scary, scary proposition for the opponent. That is a damage kick that lands. All right, we'll see if he has any response here. His opponent continues to land. A lot of swelling upstairs. Well, you gotta move your head. You gotta be preemptive. You cannot wait until your opponent starts to throw something in your direction. You gotta avoid right now if you want to avoid having this become an issue. Both oh, fighters starting to open up a little bit. Oh, big roundhouse attempt just misses. That could have been lights out. Well, I'm not sure how much more damage he can take to the body. You may want to drop that elbow defensively. Of course, that opens you up to damage upstairs. Take your poison form here as he continues to absorb damage. Inches right there, boy. Wow. It was a good night if that landed. Oh, beautifully placed knee. All right, pretty good series of knees by him there, so mixing up the striking really well in this fight tonight. Fantastic fighter. But when he added knees to his game, he became even better. Under three minutes now to go in the round. Oh, nasty cut there right on the bridge of the nose. Heavy kick downstairs. Any body kick may finish this fight. It does not have to be the front one up the middle. Oh, and he turned him there with a beautiful straight right hand. Lands with a knee. Oh, nice straight there by you, Dog. Eye starting to swell significantly now. Oh, and he connects there. Trading huge shots. Let's see who's going to be the last man standing. Oh, slips to avoid the right. Under two minutes now to go in the round. Big head kick! Oh, no! Oh. And back to his feet. Oh. Back and forth we go. It takes two to tango, and man, have these two individuals tango tonight. I might run it back. It's one of those fights where when you look at these two, and the damage on their faces, the work that they have both put in, you realize and you appreciate what these fighters do inside the octagon. They're both hurt. They're both beat up. And both of these guys have shown a tremendous amount of resilience to put themselves in position to win this fight. One minute to go in the round. It's so important. Beautiful punch lands again. Oh, he's stuck in the guillotine. He's really working hard for this guillotine, but he can't blow out his arms. He's got to make sure it's secure if he's going to go 100% and try to get this finish. Oh, submission defense on full display there. He said that he was very aware of what this guy brought to the octagon and it showed in that defense. Drops inside that closed guard, DC. Full guard. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or big ground and pound. <laughs> Buzzer sounds for the end of round four. 20 minutes in the books. All right, so we go back to the stools, and we'll see if the cut man can do his part to keep this fighter in the fight. His nose is severely cut up right now. All right, well, defense wins championships, and perhaps he can shore some things up there. Here are some replays from the damaging previous round. Well, he's got to. He's got to change some things if he doesn't want this cut to get worse. But hats off to his opponent. His opponent found the target. 
His opponent knew exactly what he wanted to accomplish, and he got it done. He's got to continue down the path in order to make the cut worse. You ready to fight? Ready. Good. Fifth and final round. Well, this is crazy that this fight is still going on. An appreciative crowd obviously getting behind both fighters. Both guys just brawling like crazy in that preview. They both came with an idea that they were collecting 50000 extra dollars. And right now, I am certain that they're both going to receive that check. And able to avoid the punch there. Nice slip by Yudon. Well, we got a lot of blood now, ladies and gentlemen. I think my mother just turned off the TV, but every time that area gets targeted, that cut is getting worse and closer, theoretically, to the end of the fight. Yeah, and, you know, when you got a person like this in front of you that is so good at what they do, when you are bleeding like this and the work is showing, you got to try to find a way to stop them. He needs to try to get a takedown or something because the more he's standing, the more he's going to have to deal with this cut. And now, all the blood that's coming from the cut. Oh, man, that cut looks terrible. He's bleeding like crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if they stopped the fight with that cut at some point. Nice crack there. So a big knockdown for him in the previous round. Oh, he's got him hurting here. one's open because that right eye is really starting to shut and he's looking for that left hand just missed man he has a great double leg my goodness he has a, a great double leg all right well time is the enemy now dc and he's really running out of it if he's going to get his hand raised tonight he's got to go forward He's got to just throw everything at his opponent to try and find that punch or that curve. Oh, another blow hits that cut. Referee might need to call on the doctor here soon. Oh, he's got to be careful there, yep. So you got to be careful playing on the ground with this guy. You don't want to mess around for too long. Look at that. Recognize he's about to lose position. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hooks. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than a half guard in the side control. Because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free. So you have more freedom to use yours. While this UFC fight is sort of dissolving into a horror movie, I don't need to see any more damage inflicted. You don't have to lose everything on one night. His corner can stop the fight now, and he would be mad now, but he would appreciate them later because it will extend his career going down the line. All these actions, you know, these big actions, got to wear on the gas tank of both guys. Lands the grounded pound strike here. Might be a submission attempt here, Chad. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in the full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. He passed the half guard. Now he's going full mount. Continuing to stay busy here on the ground. Change of the position. 
Good solid strike on the ground. And there it is, another strike on the ground gets through. All right, north-south position now. We'll see who transitions first. Oh, what a finish to this one as we go the full 25 minutes. Stand and cheer, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so the title fight goes the distance. Two of the most exciting words in all of mixed martial arts and new. I think we're going to hear Bruce Buffer utter those very words tonight. And new. And he relied on his striking in order to take the belt from the former champion. He fought beautifully tonight, and we are all proud to call him new UFC champion. All right, the official decision is in. It resides with the venerable Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest 50-45. Declaring the winner by unanimous decision, and new undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Ah!